Welcome back to the flight vlog guys and welcome back to beautiful PNG. We're in Port Moresby yet again today and today we're flying back up to Groca. We just dropped off some passengers here. Flying back at 18,000 and joined today with one of my co-workers, Josh. Jackson's ground, Avenue, Kodiak, and Papatango, Zulu. The man with Tango Zulu, ground, Avenue, go ahead. Clearance to Groca. I think it's a little the clearance 64 departure cruise 1 2000 code 0336. Copy clearance 64 request uh, amended cruise 1 8000 and squawk 0336. No, I'm taking Everything is Zulu. Uh, confirm requesting 1 8000. Affirmative as filed. 1 8000. Filed 1 8000. And I'm going to take Zulu and we get up. And ground of Abtango Zulu request uh, start clearance. I'm going to Zulu start approved. Take Zulu. Alright, all of our switches are where we want them, all the levers are back, and and check all of our fuses. Alright, fuel is on, ignition on, ox pump on, and low start. G's up to 14% and reduce the idle. Ching RTT for hot starts and NG for hunk starts. All right, it's past 40%. ITT is leveling off at 681. Generator, alternator, and aux bus on. X prop. Up our trim and our upset 20 for takeoff. So guys, this is Josh. He's going to be. He just flew down here from Garoka, and I'm flying back. And the reason why we have two crew today is just because we're not getting that much flight time. So this just allows us each to get an hour and a half this week of a flight time so we're not just sitting around wishing we were doing something fun. Right. Are you ready to taxi? Uh, I'm ready to taxi. I've already checked the fuel caps. Go ahead. And ground of Abtango, Zulu Red Taxi, 2 POV for Groga. Abtango, Zulu, taxi holding point, runway 14 right, time 06. Taxi holding point 14 right of Abtango, Zulu. Right. Taxi to 14 right, the holding point, got the taxi light on. Checks are good. Port vehicle. Matango Zulu. Uh, Recleared amended 18,000. Recleared amended 18,000 of Matango Zulu. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no, now thinking of it, I probably just, whatever was in the safe flight plan, I just left it at that. And obviously it's 12,000, so. Yeah. I think it paid it because I've got like 10 knots of tail on my tail and it yeah. pushed me along a little bit too fast. I think it's downhill as well, by like two degrees or something. I think it is too. Are you ready? Uh, not quite. Let me just finish up going through here. Okay. Our ignition is on. You've already got one eight thousand. We'll just rotate because we're empty today. We're just gonna rotate around sixty knots. I'm not really worried about that. I got my flaps and radar. My trim is set. I board if I do need to stop on the runway if we're not fifty knots, but the first taxiway. Reverse heavy braking flaps up, cut off, pull off, shut off if we're going off. After takeoff pitch for 85, consider EPL. Consider feather straight ahead down to the beach, or unless we're well, well over a thousand feet, and then we try to make it back and uh, make our mayday call. Otherwise, cut off, pull off, and shut off. Hit our emergency button, crack our door close to the ground, tighten our seat belts. All right, ignition. I'm not sure the killer's still even down when, uh, All right, we can give a call. Mark Charlie Kilo, heaven start, continue approach. Continue approach, Charlie Kilo. Tower, Avenue, Avenue, Zulu, ready, 148. Avenue, line up 148. Line up and wait, 148, Avenue, Zulu. Right, 32 degrees, 1590 on the torque, so 1540 for 1590. Clear right. Clear left. Avenue, Zulu, maintain runway heading, contact radar on 125, decimal 8, airborne, runway 148, cleared for takeoff. Maintain uh, runway heading uh, one four right radar airborne clear for takeoff. Uh, take us to them. A checklist complete. Fifteen forty. All right, airspeed is alive. There's sixty knots. Actually, kilo runway one four left uh, clear to land. One left, 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 much of the killer. And on our climb out, we're just keeping our ITT at 740, which is the top of the green. 
Right over 400 feet and over 85 knots. Reduce the flaps to 10 degrees. Radar, I've been doing November Tango Zulu. We've left 500 runway heading. November Tango Zulu, Texas, right over there. You are ready to fight at very far level. Now leaving 700 on climb. November Tango Zulu, but that runway heading. Maintain runway heading, November Tango Zulu. All right. We're just going to pitch for best climb. And runway heading. Off of the way, Papa, pa, your cleared visual approach for a straight in, one four left, contact tower at one zero DB. Cleared visual approach, straight in, one four left, uh, one zero miles, Alpha of Papa. Right over a thousand feet. Inlet into normal, ignition switches off. I put my autopilot on heading mode so I don't forget to fly runway heading. Go ahead and bring our prop back, 2,000 RPM. If you're at seven, if you're at 740 ITT and you bring it from max RPM all the way back down to 2,000, your ITT should settle in really, really close, usually if not perfect, right at 720, so you don't even have to adjust that. So what I do, I don't know about you, Josh, but what I do is I always know every airplane. I bring right to the bottom of the end. And then I don't even have to like look at this. I just set it up. Zulu, make it right turn to intercept the 208 radio. Right turn pilot intercept 208 radio on the map. Tango Zulu. It just takes all the guesswork out of it. Rehabbing to set everything up. You can just quickly pull it back there, and then go on to do the rest of your oh, yeah. after takeoff checklist, and then look back at it after it's settled down after about five or six seconds. So in each airplane that's slightly in a different place, you just kind it of is. remember Texas where it is. Good afternoon, Alpha November Papa. Uh, let me get my turn going all the way. Alpha to intercept the 298 radio, which is going to take us to start. Coming like a rocket. We are 2,200 feet per minute right now. It's not normal. Maybe I could just suck up along these edge of these clouds right here and push the updrafts. Just going to go on the outside of this rather than cut through there. Okay. Someone in the comments on one of the other videos was asking me about kind of the stats about this plane, so maybe we can go through some of those. If, uh, I wrote them all down the other day for uh, a different conversation with somebody else, but what do you think on average this thing typically climbs on average with most loads? And you get an average number probably around 1,100 to 1,150 probably? Yeah, something like that. 1,000 feet per minute is, is safe at most altitudes. If you're at sea level, obviously we're going to be climbing a lot better. Um, you know, I find where you kind of get, you don't get much better than 500 feet per minute over 10,000 feet. Oh. But under there, under 10,000 feet, you can usually expect, uh, with a full load on board, uh, you know, 800, 900 to 1,000 feet, depending on altitude. Um, yes, we have eight seats, so we can have eight passengers in the back. And a lot of times we fill this seat here as well with the passengers, so we can carry nine passengers. And... Uh, I would say typically takeoff roll is just and it's just under a thousand feet probably. Yeah, max weight at uh, sea level, you're taking off at like 800 something feet. So yeah, at, definitely sea level. You have a lot better performance than up in the mountain airstrips, but on average, yeah, it's just under that. And then I think the the POH says something like 700 feet on landing, but honestly, if you're empty, you have low fuel. For low fuel for us, it would be like an hour of fuel with no seats on board, no cargo whatsoever, one one pilot. And if you hit your spot and you're on a paved runway, you could probably land it in about 500 feet. Oh, yeah. Like at Hoskins, we can land and stop before the first taxiway. That's right, yep. And I would say that's maybe around 500 feet from the very, very end of the runway. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with how much, uh, how much reverse you're going to end up using. You know, if you're on a gravel there strip or something like that you want to be careful with pulling it really into deep reverse because that's what really digs up the props uh, beta is, is your your best bet with that heavy braking it's got some massive brakes on it um, so on a smooth paved airstrip with no uh, rocks you can really get it stopped in a hurry yeah so we can use reverse above 40 knots once we start getting below 40 knots is when we actually stop using reverse and somebody else was asking also why we why we bring it to feather after our idle cutoff rather than what the POH says is to actually feather and then cut off is because the pitch angle from the prop at a higher RPM a idle of 59% it's gonna, in the transition period it's going to suck up more little pebbles and 
chip up the um, the prop more than if we were to go feather after idle cutoff, but before that way it still keeps the oil in the and the propeller. Uh, anyways, somebody asked about that, and that's that's why we do it that way, opposite from what the actual POH says. And it looks like if you look just on the very right side of the darkest stuff, you just see a little sliver of light on between the mountain. Tango Zulu, Zulu Mosby, Group, Q18, 1013. 1013, Unova, Tango Zulu. All right, setting up altimeter Saturn, which is QNH1013, as well as setting it up on my standby 1013. Group Tower, Unova, Tango Zulu. Unova, Tango Zulu, Group Tower. I've been in November, things so that we still have uh, six, eight miles to run Garoka. Estimate at time four seven is looking for the weather. November, uh, Tango Zulu. QNH is one zero one three, wind light and variable. At this stage, we have cloud scattered to broken about uh, four thousand feet from the ground. About that, uh, blue skies and uh, yep, a distant uh, build up towards the south of the field. Copy all things, and we'll call again uh, approaching 1-5 miles. Sounds like we might actually have to do an IFR arrival into the valley. Yeah, it almost looks like that gap over on that side is... It looks further out. That almost looks like almost to the bend. I mean, yeah, we're it's only hard, 68. It's hard to know. My Charlie Tango, Mosby, Clarence, to the control area. Hey, so, and, uh, let's see, bring this out a little bit. Is, uh, that is that direction. That's looking at the Bennett area. I think what it is looks is like right I can here. see the ground right and there, it looks like, though. I think that gap uh, is this right here. See, it paints a little bit of a gap right there. All right, um, I've already got my descent right in here, but let me show you. All right, so I've set up, basically I just usually put in 500 feet before my touchdown zone of the airport. So I've at 5,500 feet. Enter, enter, brings us down to the VS target. I, today I have it set at 1,000 feet, which is gonna be fine. I'm probably gonna start my descent a little bit sooner than that. It's because if we do have to go through any of this bad weather, I'd rather be Closer to 14,000 feet, where the temperature is just a tiny bit warmer, so I don't pick up any icing. No. Nope. The only thing we and have on here is... As long as we don't accelerate you know, too quickly, too, because they're very light. Yeah, so one thing that I keep in mind if I do have to do any type of turbulent penetration or anything is making sure I am... Usually I go about 10 knots below my VA speed. So today, I'm going to go switch over to our AUX page. And it shows we're at 4,000, uh, correction, 5,400 pounds. So we're kind of in between. So our VA speed is about 124. So I like to enter around 114 because a lot of times you experience where your speed increases really, really fast and then decreases really, really fast. And I kind of be in the middle so that I do have some margin. So I'm not just like going way over my VA speed and then getting a lot of turbulence. So oh, that's what I do. I'm sure that everybody else does something a little bit different. What do you typically do, Josh? Yeah, about the same. I usually, I would probably just call it 120 if it was me. Um, and then in this aircraft, we actually have the radar, which is really helpful in knowing um, where the, the bigger cells are going to be, which also means where the bigger uh, amount of turbulence is. Remember that um, maneuvering speed is for full uh, control motions, right? Yep. So that, the amount of turbulence required to create full control motions or the equivalent of that is actually a lot more severe than you would think. So if I'm doing 120 on the descent and it starts getting bumpy, okay, I might start slowing down a little. It starts getting more and more bumpy, then I'll go ahead and slow down to the 110 or, or even slower as necessary. Um, just remembering that just because you're hitting turbulence doesn't mean that it's extreme turbulence. No, it's just you just hard. It's hard to tell from from the clouds. Exactly. You I might mean, obviously you can look at the the edges and see how sharp they are, but when they're like these, you can't. There isn't a lot of definition here. It's just kind of black right. in front of and us. You might go into it and might get the teeth kicked out of you like that. So it is good. I mean, it, it is good to always give yourself the margin as well.
It's a yes, tunnel. It is a tunnel. And it's in the right direction. It is in the right direction. It looks like, yeah. Let's try that. Watch it close on you. <laughs> well, we'll still be at 14,000, so we'll still be at a minimum safe regardless. But yeah, I can almost see like a lighter blue through there. Right, I don't know I if it actually too, yeah. picks it up on the camera or not. But we will go through there because that's pretty much direct on track. Once we get past Taraba, which is usually about 15 miles out or so. I know, I had it too far. I wasn't paying attention. All right, let's just hit nav nav and reconnect to our course here. Actually, nope, that's not going to take me where I want it to. Yeah, right. I like that. It looks pretty good. I think we're looking all the way down into the valley, too. Yeah, that actually goes right up to the, uh, more or less, the Asaro South area. Yep. So, and that's usually kind of where the weather starts Vertical to track. in the Garoka Valley. Right. For a minimum safe after Tarabo's 10-6. Okay. So we'll stay at 14,000 until we get to Tarapo. Then we can drop down to 10,600 if we're still IMC. They gave us a weather report scattered to broken around 4,000 feet above the ground over top of the field, the blue skies above. So this is very typical of this area where the like, how far are we out now? We're 35 miles out of Garoka. So for pretty much 35 all the way out to around 18 miles to Garoka. So for about 18 miles, there's just always massive buildups in the afternoon, especially this time of year. Actually, I think we're looking all the way into the valley now. Uh, I think we are too. Not a good definition there. Hopefully it shows up on the camera. It looks like I'm seeing the hill right at Tarabo. Yep. And then I'm seeing light on the ground further on up that's shining onto the valley floor. So. I was uh, one of the good lessons I was taught when I first started flying. When you're trying to figure out weather and looking at clouds, clouds will look like a big wall. But if you look at the ground, you can see where the shadows are. And the shadows will indicate how packed together they are. So if you're seeing a bunch of light with scattered shadows, you know the clouds are going to be pretty, even if they look pretty solid, it's going to be pretty scattered when you get out there. You can work your way between them or whatever. All right, so I can see all the way to the valley, I can see a good probably 30 miles all the way to Garoka right now. It does look like there's a little bit of rain sort of mist in the valley, so I went ahead and just turned my bug all the way down. If for some reason these miraculously close in on us, I could go back to 10-6. Yep. Once we get up to Tarabo, but I feel comfortable going down. So basically I turned it all the way to my pattern altitude, 500 feet above, which is gonna show me the little blue arc on here. And then I'm just going to adjust my vertical speed on my autopilot so that the blue arc comes back right to Garoka where I want it. And it looks like it's already settling out there with around 900 feet per minute. So we're 30 miles out, about nine and a half minutes out. I'm just going to go ahead and start doing a few of my checklist items. Check my brakes. My selectors are on. Our train awareness system, I'm just going to leave it on for this time. Our VREF, we're going to set up as our approach speed. So I'm going to check my aux page. It's going to tell me we are estimating landing at 5,400. Our landing speed is going to be 63 knots. And we're leaving 14,000. Uh, OK. That would be a much nicer flight back than I was actually expecting. Nice to find that one little tiny hole so you don't have to go through a bunch of right. that. Uh, there's another blue hole back there behind us. We would have seen a couple more if we hadn't taken that first one. I increase my descent rate just a, uh, by about 100, I think. Is all right I underneath that. Just to get underneath of that cloud in front of us. We'll call the tower at 1.5 miles or thereabouts. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our radar here because we don't need it. Get my map page, turn off our weather radar right there. As we are coming in, I'm just going to go ahead and flip our landing light on, our pulse light on as we come into the valley, just because there's more traffic coming in and out of this area and quite a few traffic coming out through this valley right here. Now that tunnel worked out pretty well for us. Yes, it did. I like when that happens. I would say nine times out of ten, no matter how bad it looks, there's always a hole. There's always like a nice safe route that you can still maintain 
easy VFR that you can get through safely and... Seven out of ten. Oh, maybe I just have better odds than you. <laughs> <laughs> It almost looks like an airstrip over here. There's just a road that runs on the top of a ridge, but be straight. Huh. I rode right. my motorcycle on all these out there. Actually, I rode, rode up on that one right there, too. The one yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, up to the top of that mountain. I went up there and uh, got to the very end of the road, and the kids up there had never seen a motorcycle in their life. Well, I'm not call, uh, call tower. Grove tower, up in Utkin, Kodiak, Nova Tango, Zulu. What are you on? And I think it's Zulu, Kolkata, Fayet. I think Zulu is now 1-5 miles, your circuit at time 4-5, copy 1013. I think it's Zulu, runway 35 right, wind light and variable. Q&A just advised, and uh, track for right pace, report right pace. 35 right, re request a straight and final, I think it's Zulu. I think it's Zulu, Roger. Okay, cancel the right pace, track for finals, report finals. Track report final, right, 3-5 right, Nova Tango, Zulu. Oh, I've got my landing light, my pulse light on. We'll do um, our inertial separator in a second. Abort an emergency, if we do need to go around for any reason, birds go or anything else. Afternoon again, Mike Charlie, whiskey, full power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73, straight ahead or maneuver is required. Condition, Back the around. The POB-19 request taxi. We set up all of my... Mike Charlie, whiskey, tower up again. A taxi for 17 right. Cross 17 left. Conditions is advised. Traffic in Bonn, Nova Matinga Zulu, Kodiak. Pass 15 miles. Estimating Goroka time 45. Uh, clear taxi 17 right. Cross 17 left. Copy Nova Matinga Zulu. Mike Charlie Whiskey. Right, Nova Matinga Zulu is now on an 8.5 mile final. 35 right. Alright, that was autopilot off. Nova Matinga Zulu, continue approach. Continue approach 35 right of Tango Zulu. It must have cleared up since uh, when he gave us the 4,000 foot scattered, so. Yep. So uh, you got a dash 8 taxi for um, the long runway, Mike Charlie with. Okay. I'm just going to keep my speed up so that he doesn't have to sit on the end of the runway and wait for us. Go ahead and finish this up. Props and harness. We'll get in a minute. We'll get harnesses now, so don't forget that. Props in a second just to slow us down. Do flaps because we're light, because we don't Actually, have any passengers, and because I want to come in. I'm just going to come in probably 85 and then touch down probably closer to 80 knots just so that I can get on the ground sooner for him. All right, we are five miles out. I'm going to go ahead and start slowing down a little bit. Pop forward. Tango Zulu is now five mile final, three five right. November Tango Zulu, runway three five right, three to land. Clear to land, 35 right, Nova, Tango Zulu, you are clear to land. Alrighty. Alright, I'm gonna bring my torque down to around 300 to 350. Oh, there goes a big bird. <laughs> that was close. Alright, I'm below 140, put my inertial separator into bypass. Ups and harnesses are complete. We are landing clearance below 138 knots, 10 degrees of flaps. 500. We'll land with 20 degrees of flaps. And he's sitting at the end of the runway waiting for us, so. Low 120. Thank you. 20 degrees of flaps, we'll remain there. Checklist complete. Checking a sinker, short final. He can't even hear his radio. Clear for takeoff. And just past the hump. Actually, there we go. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video from Port Moresby back to Garoka. If you did, give me a thumbs up and share it with the other aviation enthusiasts that would like this kind of content. Leave a comment below on how you think you can make or how I can make these videos better for you guys. And uh, thanks again for taking the time to watch. Have a good one. Trent. Looks like we're parking outside. It looks like we're the only ones here. They leave us a van? Hope so. And I got your numbers. All right, thanks. All right, first shutdown. First thing I'm gonna do is just turn off our blowers, turn off our taxi light.
off our ox punt, our ox pump, our bus, generator, alternator. Put our hand on our low motors just in case we need to do that. And start off below 38%. Put a feather. That up. Now I'm just watching my ITT to make sure it drops all the way down to 200 and then basically goes away. If for some reason it starts climbing back up, that means that the fire inside the engine is still burning and I'm going to go ahead and low motor it to try to blow all that fire out. But it's hitting here at 200 and that's it. All right, like I said, thanks guys for taking the time to watch. Have a good one.